Looks like uh, previous talks have already covered a lot of the points uh, we're going to make about Presto, so I think we're done here. <laughs> um, so be before we start, uh, show of hands, how many people uh, haven't heard, hadn't heard about Presto before coming to the summit? Well, that's pretty good. Like a year ago, like half of the audience would have raised their hands there. How many people have used Presto, have used Presto in the past? Okay, we need to do better there then. <laughs> I want everyone to use Impresto. So just to, to recap what other people have said before, uh, like why, why do we think people choose Presto, have you chosen Presto over the past few years? Uh, we built Presto from the beginning to be an open source project. Uh, from, from day one, we wrote everything on GitHub. We, we started preparing everything to the eventual day where it will become open source, and we've been Ensure, making sure that uh, it, it, it was successful as an open source project. Uh, so everything we did was uh, taking, taking that into account. And I think this is one of the biggest points that, that make people choose, choose Presto is the, well, first, the, the peace of mind that well, it's an open source project, so you can go look under the hood, you can extend it, you can change it if it doesn't fit your needs, uh, you can fix uh, bugs if, if you have some, some problem going on. And, um, and, and you have access to a big community of people that are, uh, that are using Presto, that are developing for Presto. Because it's open source and uh, it has broad adoption all over the world, it has exposure to all sorts of different use cases, all, all the way from interactive queries over ha Hive Hadoop uh, data to large ETL uh, processing to there are some companies that build their entire analytics products on top of Presto. So Presto is kind of the, the engine uh, supporting their, their infrastructure. Um, and, and then, of course, the, the ability to query different uh, data sources. So that variety of workloads and the, the access to the community and the support is it, it's, it's a, it's a big factor. First of all, it's built for speed. And it kind of addresses one, one, one segment of the market that traditionally uh, proprietary databases would, uh, would handle but it does in a way that can scale to much larger workloads that, that, than those systems. And you can do it in, so it's agnostic to cloud environments or on-premise environments, so it can, it can, uh, it can do that in, in different scenarios that other, other systems like uh, commercial databases haven't been uh, able to adapt to. And the architecture of Presto is, from the beginning, we made it extensible via a plugin system and that made the system, uh, made it possible to decouple compute from storage. It wasn't something we thought about in the beginning, but uh, like it, it kind of happened, and it has been one of the, of the biggest uh, and most important drivers of adoption in the last few years. And of course, because of that, uh, there's the, the benefit that there's no lock-in to any storage vendor, any uh, cloud environment, or. Uh, or, or, one, or an underlying system. Presto is just the engine, and you can adapt to any of those systems. So it's easy to switch between technologies if you need to. Any other problems here? You can switch that there. Yeah. All right, so why is Presto fast? Like Presto, we, when we built it, the, the main goal, the initial goal was to make interactive queries over, over a massive Hadoop high warehouse possible. So for performance was always a big consideration. It has always been, it has been a consideration for the past uh, few years. And so press to say it's based on a traditional MPP style architecture. It does pipeline execution, which can help reduce latencies. Uh, and you can, it can scale to thousands of machines and thousands of cores. So a single query can run on that many uh, CPU. So even if you have a lot of data to process, it, it can be done quickly if you, if you apply enough, uh, enough power to it. And, and then there's two aspects to where the performance comes from. One is the brute force raw performance of the engine, and it's designed uh, using vectorized processing, CPU-friendly processing, uses efficient data structures, does all the processing in memory, and, and that, uh, well, and it also, for, for the performance sensitive parts of a query, compiles them to 
uh, Java bytecode, and then the, the JVM can compile that into native uh, uh, machine code, efficient machine code. Um, so that all those, those things combined to make uh, the Presto engine have like be, be super super efficient and, and performant at the raw uh, performance brute force level. The, there's the other aspect, which is. Uh, you have to be also be smart about how you process data. Like for example, if you have a hype table with a thousand partitions and you just want to filter data to one partition, you want to process everything. So the, the engine is smart about pushing down predicates, optimizing the queries such that you scan the least amount of data uh, as possible. And, and that involves, for example, if, you, if you're using formats like Oracle or Parquet, you can even take advantage of the of some of the stats that those file formats um, store inside the files to uh, avoid processing sections of the files. So by, by being smart about uh, how to uh, reason about the query, how to push down predicates, how to even uh, reorder the, uh, if you have a join, reorder the, 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 the size of the join, it can reduce the amount of data that has to be processed. So not only can process data fast, but it can also minimize the amount of data that needs to be processed. The, the other defining characteristic of, of Presto, as, as we mentioned before, is the plugin architecture. This is something that we did out of necessity when, uh, when we were at Facebook, because we, we wanted to make Presto open source. Uh, but we were running at Facebook a, a custom version of the uh, Hadoop, uh, of the Hadmere store of AGFS. It was a fork of AGFS at the time. So the, we had the question of, well, how do we make Presto open source and be able to talk to open source Hive and at the same to time talk, about, talk to and communicate with the internal version of uh, uh, Metastore and AGFS Facebook was running? So we said, okay, well, let's put an abstraction. Uh, around the storage layer and uh, make it pluggable. So in the open source version, we don't need to ship the internal connectors for uh, the internal infrastructure in the, and, and, and vice versa. And that was, that, this has been one of the most consequential decisions we made. And uh, we, we really didn't think about the, the impact it would have in the, in the long-term uh, vision of the project. But over the years, people have uh, contributed and created plugin and connectors for all sorts of data sources, like not just Hive, but we have connectors for all the JDBC base, JDBC like uh, databases or databases that have JDBC interfaces like MySQL, Postgres, uh, relation, uh, other relational databases, or even non-SQL systems like uh, uh, Cassandra, Cumulo, Mongo, and and some other kind of. Uh, Things that you you wouldn't think as something you can query from using SQL, like Kafka, uh, Kinesis, and so on. Um, so so that, that basically made Presto extremely extensible at the at the storage layer, like how you can connect to different systems. And then on the other side, it, it exposes a simple SQL interface. Uh, it, that's the only interface really to Presto. It's, uh, the language is based on ANSI SQL, so it's a familiar language to everyone, and that makes it easy to integrate with uh, all the analytics tools like Tableau and, and so on. So, but the thing is, being able to query from a data source is not, uh, that, that, that's cool, but it's, that's not the powerful thing. Like being able to combine data from different sources is what makes Presto shine. So let's look at a, an example of something that you could do. Let's say you have, you have a movie streaming service, and you have an Elasticsearch index with all your movies. Uh, it's fully uh, full text searchable index. You have all your all the information about all the views that when people stream a movie, in, and you, they are stored in Hive for the for the kind of a long term uh, storage of, of all that data, and then you have your dimension data or your set of users and their demographics and so on in a MySQL database. With Presto, you can combine all those sources in a single query and you can say, you can do something like this where you're trying to analyze the age distribution of people that uh, watch a specific kind of movie, space fiction in this case. So uh, you can join a, the, the movies table and this is some uh, specialized syntax that the connector for Elasticsearch supports 
uh, to be able to do a full text uh, query on Elasticsearch, and you can join against the views and, and against the users and, and, and do the aggregation over there uh, to get the, the quantiles, 25th, 50th, and, and 75th quantiles of age for each of the users. Um, so, so this is one of those, those things where and, and other people have talked about how you can combine with a single query language and a single interface data from different systems. We are having to think about where the data comes from or doing, you don't have to do ETL to move all the elastic search data into Hive or into HDFS to be able to query it and join it with, with the view data. The other scenario, another scenario that, that this is something that we've been hearing from uh, a lot of companies. It's something they want to be able to do. They have long-term data in Hive, in HDFS or Hive, and they store recent data in some other store that is more tuned to being able to update uh, and insert data quickly. Um, for example, MySQL or even a, a streaming system. And a lot of the analysis needs to be able to combine those. So you can do something like this. This is one way you can model it. You, can, you could do a union of the historical data and, and the recent data and present that as if it was a single view. So users that, that are doing analytics only have to do a query like we have here where they only have to think about does the data come from the long-term storage, does it come from uh, a uh, Kafka stream and so on. So this kind of shows some of the, of the power of being able to combine data sources. There's a huge global community of users. Uh, this, this list is actually a bit old. Uh, over the past couple of years, we've seen tremendous growth in the number of uh, people using Presto, people contributing to Presto. It's a community, a community across the entire uh, globe. Uh, this year, we did conferences in uh, Israel, in India, in Japan, and here in the, in the Bay Area. And this is a conference organized by people from the community and all centered around Presto. So that has been pretty impressive and, and it's growth that we have seen only in the past couple of years. Uh, earlier this year, in January, we set up um, a, a nonprofit foundation for Presto. The goal is to basically continue to do what we had, what had made Presto successful for the previous six years. Like what, what made Presto successful as an open source project and, and continue to gain momentum around that. And, and, and the goal is to make, the, make sure that the project remains open, collaborative, and independent for the long term. We want Presto to be successful for the next 30, 50 years. Like, and when we, we draw inspiration from projects like uh, Postgres, like they've been around for I know, more than 30 years, and they're super successful. Everyone knows about them, and that's kind of the same thing we want for, for Presto in the, in the long run. Uh, so if you want to get involved, there's uh, here are some links. We have uh, all the source code for Prestis on GitHub. We have a website. It has documentation and, and, and other resources. Uh, there's a weblog, uh, a bunch of interesting articles that talk about use cases, uh, internal details about Presto. If you want to contribute to the blog, it's, an, it's a community, community blog, so anyone can do it. Uh, you can follow, follow the project on Twitter. and. If you need help or if you want to get involved in development, uh, join the Slack channel. There's two dedicated channels that, that might be interesting to you. There's a very active communi community. Uh, people will, like, if you ask a question, people, there's people 24-7 uh, uh, on, the, on the channel answering questions. So uh, use that as a resource. So uh, just to give, give you a quick uh, a taste of everything that happened over the past 10 months or so, we've done uh, about 25 releases in the last 10 months. Uh, these are some of the things that happened in those releases. They range from new language features, security improvements, uh, better support for different uh, cloud environments, uh, new functions, new connectors. There's a connector for Google Sheets, Elasticsearch, uh, uh, Apache Phoenix, Amazon Kinesis, and then performance improvements across the board. And this is not the only thing. Uh, there's a lot more stuff. You can, you can find more by following that link. So with that, Camille is going yeah. to talk about how Starburst fits in the picture here. All right. Thank you, Martin. Um, I don't so think I actually missed this. Um, 
Okay, so Starburst, uh, as a company, was formed about two years ago. We are a commercial arm for the open source project Presto. We've been actually involved uh, in the project for probably five years or so. Um, um, uh, what we do for Presto is what you expect from you know, any uh, venture that's around open source. We provide a stable uh, distribution of our software that you can download for free and try uh, running this in production and enjoy the benefits of a stable long-term release with patches and, and other benefits like this. Um, uh, for enterprise customers, we offer 24 by 7 support, uh, which might be a slightly more res responsive than Slack, um, you know, as you can expect. Um, and it, it also comes with extra functionality on top of Presto or around Presto, such as you know, uh, ODBC drivers, integration with security mechanisms, um, uh, commercial connectors for data sources that, you know, things like Oracle, Teradata, um, uh, and recently also Kubernetes integration, which I will touch on um, later. Um, and, you know, as a company, we are doing a ton of contributions to the core open source as well. Uh, I think at this point we are driving uh, over 50% of contributions to the community as well. Um, uh, and you can run Presto and Starburst Presto in this case in any cloud and on-premise and we'll support you in any environment that you're running. Um, so since this is an event about Alexio and we heard uh, already how Alexio uh, hubs with, uh, for many, uh, in many deployments with Presto. Um, uh, we want to give credit to Alexio and thank them also for, for uh, having us here and, and definitely acknowledge that for big data sources such as HDFS or object storage, uh, for cases where you, know, you have a working set of data that you know, fits in memory or it could be uh, sort of extracted from your giant data lake and put into more optimized storage, whether that's memory or maybe SSDs locally, Alexa can provide uh, significant benefits and, and help with um, avoiding sort of ex excessive network traffic. Um, uh, and with that every success uh, of many users trying this combination, we actually are coming up with um, an offering for or initially on AWS Marketplace where you can get uh, AMI and CloudFormation template and run Presto and Alexa together uh, in a combined optimized stack supported by bo both vendors um, at the same time. Um, I'll be you know, talking more about this during the lab as well, I'm sure. Um, so the one interesting thing that we're doing uh, right now, which is uh, helping people to um, avoid common challenges uh, when administering large Presto clusters. Um, so in order to make Presto really run anywhere and have the same user experience from administrative point of view and, and also from the user point of view, uh, we are investing heavily in um, uh, so simplifying administration, you know, configuration, upgrades, uh, you know, providing HA capabilities, uh, as well as auto scaling um, uh, to to allow you to save on compute, uh, which is both important in a cloud and in on-premise uh, virtual environments. Uh, with all those things together, we basically uh, put a bet on Kubernetes, and and we are sort of uh, allowing to you to. Um, sort of run the Presto environment fully on a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we are currently certified with Red Hat OpenShift for on-prem deployments uh, and also with native cloud provider uh, uh, that offer Kubernetes like GKE, AKS, and EKS. Um, and we do this by leveraging Kubernetes operator framework and we allow you to spin up uh, you know, a fully configured cluster, uh, manage all that, uh, those capabilities together, so it's just fully simplified, um, and you can monitor your cluster through Prometheus, um, uh, and just have all the benefits um, of Presto in much, much easier, um, much easier uh, to manage package. And with that, I will uh, just invite you to another Presto event. Um, that will be actually in New York. So if anybody knows anybody in, on the East Coast, definitely let them know. Uh, December 11th, we'll have a full day just focused on Presto. Uh, and it's an event organized by, co -organized by Presto Software Foundation, Starburst, and Red Hat. Um, and we'll have experience of uh, even more Presto users uh, uh, happily running uh, this solution. With that, thank you so much. <laughs>